everybody, this is Ben. And this is Will. And today we're doing our, was this, the fourth screencast, right? Yeah. Well, kind of. Technically there are two part twos, but we'll call it the fourth. I think we should call it the fourth. And uh, what we're doing today is we're going to write a little Python program to kind of get you into the, uh, the basics of Python programming. And we're both going to do it over Skype while I watch Ben's screen. This is going to be interesting. It is going to be kind of interesting. I thought it would be, you know, excellent. Anyway, why don't you tell them what kind of program we're going to write. Okay. Today we are going to write a word count program. We talked about a lot of different things for our little example program, but Ben had the fantastic idea of just doing a word count program where all you do is give it a text file and it goes through and counts up how many lines there are, how many words there are, and then how many characters there are. So basically it's going to try to emulate the word count function you see in Microsoft Word or OpenOffice. Yeah. So just to get started, I've uh, already created a file called wc.py. If you guys use Linux or Unix, you already know that there's a WC program already installed uh, on the system. So we're just going to write our own little version of it, uh, which is going to be a little bit of a scaled down version. Might be a little bit slower on like larger files, but it's going to do the job and it's going to make things look pretty. And it's going to be cooler because we wrote it ourselves. Indeed. So let's just uh, jump right into it. You can go ahead and ignore the uh, first couple lines that I just wrote in this uh, Vim file, uh, or in the Vim editor, import sys and uh, hash bang user bin env python. We will talk about that a little bit later and in a different screencast. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write a function uh, to do all of our character counting. So functions are described like this. You've got the little def there. Uh, that means... Define? No, I don't think it's define, is it? Definition. Might be definition. Defuncto uh, function. <laughs> defuncto function. Uh, but def tells the Python interpreter that you're about to write a function. And then you type the name of the function, in this case, care count. Uh, you want it to be something diff um, descriptive and interesting. And then you have to write parentheses, and then you give it the arguments uh, to the uh, function. Now, you could just as easily have a function that has no arguments, just like this. Um, but we're going to need a function, uh, an argument for this to tell it what file to do all the counting for. So in our case, we're just going to throw in the, the variable name file path to represent whatever file we give it. So when we actually call the function, file path will get replaced with something like uh, I don't know, super recipe .txt. Exactly. Basically, this allows us to make our function generic for any file path that we give it, and we can give it any argument we want, and it's going to return values, namely the lines, words, and characters in that file that we give it. So the first thing in most programming languages, and Will and I are kind of working from a weird perspective. You either know zero about programming, or you know a lot about programming, you just want to learn Python syntax. So we're kind of in this weird middle ground, so we apologize if it uh, seems weird. But the first thing we have to talk about is uh, variables and assignment. Here we're using a little Python shortcut where we're just saying that we're going to be using three different variables, lines, words, and characters, or chars as we're calling them. And all of them are going to be initially set to zero. So we're just using the Python variable equals variable equals variable equals zero to do that. We could also write it lines equals zero, words equals zero, chars equals zero, but that's more typing. Yes, that's more typing. And unlike some other languages, in Python you don't need to declare uh, variables ahead of time. You can just use them, like in this entrance, uh, in this line right here. And actually, lines equals zero is what's called an expression. So expressions uh, in Python are combinations of variables, constants, numbers, and operators uh, that do certain things. So for instance, if we wanted to increase, uh, if we wanted to add something to lines, we do lines is equal to lines plus one. And that increases the number of lines in lines by one. We'll be using that a lot in this program. 
Okay, so what Ben's doing right now, he's putting in a try block. And try is actually this handy little thing that will attempt to do something, and if it fails, it will fall back and do something else. So he, you can see that he's got the try and then the colon. Remember from part three, colon means we're gonna be doing a big chunk of stuff after this. So Python knows that it needs to indent it for a bit. Ben's gonna type some stuff. And then he's gonna write the second part of this try statement, which is the accept bit. So you can see here, he's got his try. He's gonna try opening a file. And if for some reason that fails, the file doesn't exist, it's not available to be opened for reading, uh, whatever, then the program's gonna jump down to that accept block and it's gonna have an exception. So you can see the big word exception there. And then it's gonna print out whatever exception is thrown and then exit. So in the case of a file that doesn't exist, it'll be an exception, file does not exist, and the program will exit. This is a real handy way to try to do something and then fall back and fail gracefully and not just completely face plant. Any program you're writing should definitely make extensive use of try accept blocks to avoid system crashing program ending errors. Yeah, and in our case, this accept block actually does end the program, but it doesn't crash everything. It kind of tells you what went wrong and then the program uh, ends. But, you know, computers take things very literally and if you pass it a bad file name or something and it can't open the file, that's the case that I'm guessing will be the, uh, the most common exception for this try accept block. Um, and so we just want to say something effective, oh, that file doesn't exist, or oh, I couldn't open that file for some reason, and just tell you that and then quit the character counter program. You could have done this with if statements, but the nice thing about try accept blocks is that they're more generic. I don't have to check if file does not exist, this is the failure. If file is not open for reading, this is the failure. Try will just do whatever's inside it, and any error it encounters, it will just handle as an exception, assuming whatever error it hits is defined as an exception for the system. So try is really handy, more generic than if statements, but you can kind of see how the functionality would be sort of similar. Now you saw how we did this import sys up here, and then I did sys.exit down below here. One of the great strengths of Python is that it comes with a bunch of built-in modules uh, that allow us to import other libraries and other functions in so that we don't have to code everything all at the same time. So sys is a Python built-in for the system, and sys.exit uh, is a method or it's a function that is in the sys package that allows us to just exit the program gracefully. Uh, another built-in that we're using here is this open uh, function. Open takes a file path, which so does our function, and it takes this little uh, string right here, r, as a second argument. So you can see we're passing two arguments to the open function. And uh, what the R means is we're going to open it for reading. We don't need to open it for writing. If we were going to open it for writing, we just put a W there, and that would mean for writing. Uh, but we don't actually need to write anything to this file since we're just counting things, uh, so it's more optimal to use the R. And to kind of explain how this line is, open, is working with open file path R as F, we're using the with as combination of statements whereby we're saying using whatever file we open, we're gonna do a bunch of stuff, but from here on out, we're gonna to refer to that file as F. So basically, we're gonna open the file using the open statement and then immediately assign the junk inside the file to a variable F. We could have said with open file path R as cheeseburger, and then the variable storing everything would be called cheeseburger. So this with as statement is real handy to just shorthand and say, take the entire file, throw it in this variable, now we're gonna do stuff with it. Also, what's really nice about with as is that everything that I put in this block, and we should probably talk about blocks, um, but as soon as I'm done with everything that happens in this block, the with statement is going to close the file. So generally speaking, if you open the file, you also have to close it when you're done with it, but by using with, it's closed automatically for us when we're done using the file. Hey, how nice is it's that? Pretty nice. Now you should notice that I'm doing some indentation here, and indentation in Python is not uh, just to make things look nice and pretty, but it actually defines blocks. So basically everything on this indent level right here uh, belongs to this care count uh, function. 
if I want to write a new function, then I would have to de-indent it over here. New func args. And then I would indent here to say that this is a new function. And basically Python looks at the indenting level to see what you're working with. So when you go up here to this try block, I have to indent in here to say, okay, everything under here is in the try. And then when I come back out to accept, that means that this accept statement is not underneath the try block. Everything under this tab is under accept. So again, with width, we're going to indent to do everything under width. And then after this part's done, then it will close the file. This is a really unique part of Python using this whole indenting concept. Most programming languages use uh, brackets to group things. Python doesn't do that. Tabs are not optional. The indenting is a core component of Python. And just watch out for it because you really want to be using the tab key for this. Five spaces is not equivalent. So hopefully you're using a good developing program and you can just tab in to indent. Okay. But that's out, that's outside the scope yeah. of this. Actually, yeah, four spaces is is what I'm using right now as my tab. Vim knows. If you're not using an editor, this is Vim right now. I highly recommend you use Vim as your uh, editor. It's better than Notepad. Anyway, next thing up is we've got a for loop. First example of iteration. For loops are delicious. And... As you can see, we've got that f appearing again. Remember that f is just the variable storing whatever's in our file. And so we are saying for line in f, blah, 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 blah. And it's nice because Python knows that when we say for line in f, we really want a line from the file. So this is basically just going to go pull out each line in the file and then do stuff to whatever that line contains. So you can see that we've already got a simple counter going on right now. Every, for every line in the file, we're going to add one to the number of lines that we have. So when we're done going through this file, it's going to give us the number of lines in the file. And we're using a little bit of a shortcut on the code there. See how we have lines plus equals one? That is equivalent to saying lines is equal to lines plus one, or essentially increment whatever lines is currently at by one and save it. Now we're gonna count the number of cares, um, or chars as Will says, and uh, we're gonna do that by using this len function. Len is a built-in, and it returns the length of strings, lists, dictionaries, uh, tuples, everything. Uh, all these, everything, all these things in, um, in, all these types in Python that have lengths associated with them, the len built-in uh, will return it. And so the line itself is just a string that looks like something like that. So the len of this line, actually it probably looks something like that, to be completely honest. That's a new line at the end there to say this is the end of a line. Um, this is a string, and the length of this string will be the number of characters uh, that are in a string. So one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So by adding the length of the line to the number of characters, we're gonna get the total number of characters. And keep in mind that we are counting spaces, punctuation, new lines, everything gets counted with len. Yeah, all characters. Okay, so what Ben is doing now is he's putting together a word list variable, and then he's using this split method, which is actually really handy. If you have a string, like line currently is, it's just a string, a line from the file, you can use the dot split method on it to actually break it into chunks. And you can see how there's a space between the parentheses there. That's because we're using the space as the current split character. We could use a period in there, we could use a hyphen, whatever you want to split on. So what this is actually going to do is it's going to go through the line. Every time it finds a space, it's going to remove the chunk before the space, throw it in an array. Then it's going to keep looking for another space, remove everything before that space, throw it in an array, so on and so on and so on. So by the time that line is done, word list is a gigantic array of each of the individual words in the line split by space. 
So now that we have our lines, cares, and word lists, and basically for every line, we're gonna count up everything that's in that line until we get to the end of the file. Well, now we're gonna have to give back those values to whoever's calling our function. So we're gonna use return lines, words, cares. And so now anyone that calls this function is going to get the lines, words, and cares from it. And just to explain a little bit more, right above that, you see how we have words plus equals lin word list. We're just taking the length of the array or the number of words in the line and then adding that to words, just to explain that explicitly. Yeah, so just the same len function that we were using before, um, but word list is a list, so instead of the number of characters, it's gonna be the number of things in the list, which in this case is the number of words. So now we have our function written. This, when you give it a file name, it'll open the file, count up all the lines, count up all the cares, chars, characters, <laughs> whatever, and all the <laughs> words, and then return that information to whatever called the function. So we have a function, but now we need to actually call it and have it do something. So Ben is putting together a little block that we're going to explain more in part five about how to actually run a program and call it nicely. But the gist of it is that the line he's putting in means that as soon as we call the file, it's going to automatically run this particular method, function. Right. So you can see what's going to happen here is uh, that we're going to call our care count function and then on this test.txt file, and it's going to print out the lines words and characters. Uh, now I'm not going to show you, until the next episode, we're going to show you how to actually run this program in the command line, so I'm just going to keep it simple here. Uh, but just to prove to you that this works, uh, we actually have the WC program right here, and we have a test.txt, and when we run it, you can see it prints out, there are seven lines, 17 words, and 98 characters in test.txt. And uh, that is the contents of test.txt. Just to prove to you that it wasn't magic, actually, there do appear to be seven lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and probably about 17 words and 98 characters. Yeah, and uh, sorry about the psychotic test file. <laughs> that's not psychotic. That's, that's a good children's book right there. <laughs> line break, line break. You know, I think that's excellent. So we have skipped over a lot of things in this simple program. For instance, for people who are new to Python, we haven't exactly explained what lists were, strings, all the various basic primitive types of Python. Um, you know, we kind of briefly got into functions and what they do, um, barely got into modules and importing packages and all the built-ins in Python. So there's a huge, huge world of Python programming out there. But what we wanted you to see from this simple little program is that in 26 lines of code, very simple lines of code that are human readable and understandable, I think that anyone watching our show uh, can sort of look and with our brief explanation of what everything is, can understand what this program does. You can write programs that do awesome things like count the number of words, lines, and characters uh, in a program. And, hey, if you're writing a dissertation, maybe this program could be really useful to you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yet, the beauty of Python is that we've still managed to introduce some very powerful concepts, especially that try except block. We technically don't need to have that in there, but because Python makes it so easy to see how a try except block works, we can include it and not be confused. But for people that know things about programming, that's a very nice way to throw a try except block in there. There's just an example of what happens with that try except block. Oops, no such file or directory test two. Maybe you moved it. Maybe you deleted it. Maybe your dog ate it. It probably was Spot. It probably was Spot. Spot's hungry after all of his line breaks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, you know, we just wanted to show you, just get you an introduction to Python. And, I mean, I hope you can hear how excited Will and I are when we program and we talk about programming. And one of the things we want to do with the show is just try to get you involved in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and for a lot of people, the block is that it seems complicated or difficult, but we just wrote a simple program that does something important 
in 26 lines of code and you, you all can understand it. And I hope that would make you want to explore programming as a topic more in the future. So tune in for part five, where we're actually going to cover some of the details about how to run Python programs and how to like give it arguments and all that fun stuff. So it's definitely a must see video after part four. Thanks for watching.